Mic check, mic check. So, welcome guys to one more Monday live with me. Greetings from Croatia and this week I decided to test YouTube instead of, instead of the Facebook because we're doing like Monday lives basically every Monday evening on the Facebook so far. Since YouTube has now technology as well, so we are checking out, we are testing their technology as well. And topic tonight, tonight I would like to dedicate to answer all of your questions. I know you guys who missed my summer camp, who missed my sailing week, you know, my one-on-ones this summer, you have, I'm sure you have lots of questions to ask regarding your game and I wonder how was your game? How was how was your summer? And yeah, all together, like you know, I just wonder, like you know, did you, did you guys manage to get laid? What was happening with your summer and how is it going? So, can someone please first test the the chat? Does it work with the chat? Am I receiving the question? So, can I please someone just go and ask something or put something in the chat because? I'm not sure, am I able to see anything? I hope I do. If not, I will start okay, please. one more Sorry. chance. Yeah, that's, that's it. So, yeah, I had a really interesting evening last night because one of the girls who I, who I was playing with for a while, she, <laughs> it's a funny story. She brought me um so I met this girl, I think before summer, like you know, yeah, before summer camp, like a uh, end of like mid-July, and just kind of day game approach and got a phone number. And then she went to the she went to the holidays with her parents. I went I like on the summer camp, so we didn't see each other. Finally, she's back in a town and we had a first date like a few days ago and I managed to kiss her, but you know, nothing more. So we scheduled a evening date yesterday and guess what happened? She showed up here with her sister. Disaster, like total and ultimate disaster. So what the fuck do you do? Okay. So she's like, oh, you know what? By the way, my sister is coming with me. I mean, is that okay? I hope that's okay with you. I'm like, up. Okay, fuck it, you know, come. I should have been smart and say, fuck, no, like, you know, either you come alone, you don't bring me. But kind of in those moments, you feel kind of being a jerk, you feel maybe like it's too much to push the girl that much, so kind of you go along with the flow, okay, come. So she brought over her sisters, so like, you know, she's like a 20, so the girl is like a 23 and the sister is 19. The boat's really hot, and of course, okay, threesome is not possible because sisters, okay, family. And you know, there's nothing sexual between sometimes, sometimes, very rarely in some crazy families, it's possible to actually do like you know, some family threesomes, but unfortunately, not in this case. Okay, so um, I still managed to get laid, but it was kind of pain. As I mean, it's, it's really showed important how it was this time, like at 8 9 p.m., and I totally didn't plan anything. All of my wingmans are out of the town, and so basically I was almost fucked. So I had only one guy to call. So basically they came over, and basically I, you know, did like a good host routine, like you know, open the bottle of the wine, talk with them, drink, and then put some music on, you know, make a tea, you know, kind of make an argila. So basically it's like running things around, but you know. The, 
any sexual escalation wasn't possible because of her sister. So I just took my phone and basically went to the toilet and called one of my wingmen to come over here, the only one who was in the town. He came over in 10 minutes. And I mean, just showing how important it is to have guys who are trained in the game, the guys who can come and help you. I mean, situations like that will happen. And there are some things that you simply cannot deal. You cannot, you cannot handle alone. It's simply not possible for, you know, this kind of situation for you because I mean, I was stuck. So basically I'm, I go to the terrace with my girl, the sister falls out there. I go inside, I know, you know, kind of do something, sisters go inside, like, you know, I'm talking, I, I'm running a cube bonus on, on, on my girl, you know, sister wants as well. So it's simply not possible until my wingman came and basically took her and took her aside and basically managed to separate them. Basically, I went with my up here in a, in a bedroom. He was down there on the living room with a sister. It's simply not possible. So that's why, guys, it's really important for you to, to create friendships to train your friends to be good wingmen and you know kind of um, to go out help your friends you know train your train your friends to be a good wingman you know help them to pick up girls together you guys have to do that i mean like you know there's a free there's a free module for how to train your wingman you can send this to your friends you know kind of of the bad boy school log in there you know, and, you know, educate your wingmen for fucking sake. You will need them. You cannot live on this planet alone. Lots of you guys, you know, especially in this community, they have, they have lack of, lack of abilities or skills to create friends, to maintain friendships. And that's something you guys need to take care. Of. I think in a bad boy school, I'm going to soon record and create like you know module for that because i noticed that's a problem lots of guys are now living without friends they think they can live hold their life alone you cannot you cannot like live like you know on this planet isolated like you know in your little apartment and you know not talk with everybody and expecting to have amazing to have an excellent life it's not gonna happen you know on this planet you are supposed to share things to exchange your energy to give to get something back in a return, like, you know, to enjoy the life with others, with guys and with girls. So yes, you know, sharing, you know, kind of, you have to share your girls, your food, your time, basically your best and the worst moments with people. That's normal, you know? So having friends, it's, it's part of the game, you know, building a good social circle that feeds you. So guess what, you know, it's so basically yesterday, my, my wingman got laid with that girl. We both got laid. So next time he's going to bring me over, basically he's going to call me when he has some girl over at his place, he's going to share. So it's kind of, it's a win-win situation. You know, sometimes you bring some girls, sometimes them bring some girls, sometimes the girls bring the girls. So, you know, it's, it's normal. It's all about the setup, but you kind of, it's part of, it's kind of part of being a, I'm like a good, happy person to kind of, to have friends, to kind of, to give, to share things to share knowledge, to, to do as many things as possible, okay? So that's kind of part, uh, just funny situation for me yesterday, and I think, you know, I simply had to share it with you because, you know, I'm sure it will happen, like, you know, it will happen the moment, some moments you really cannot do without wings, without like a friends or something, you know, it's much, some situations are much easier. I mean, the only thing that I was able to do yesterday was if I stayed with them whole night, didn't escalate and then send them home and then try to ring it. But who knows what what the sister will tell about me and but usually they bring sisters with them, they're not sure should she fuck you or not. She's not sure. So basically she needs a permission and second opinion from a sister. That's what usually happens. So I think it's important. I think it's important for for you guys as well to kind of always have someone on the call who you can call and, you know, kind of like instant wingman, you know, kind of wingman on a call or best friend or someone like, you know, when for situations like this, because I was hundred percent sure she's going to come over. It's going to be done deal. We're going to hear her watch a movie, you get some food, you know, open the bottle of the wine, relax, you know, music. And then, 
you know, one thing will lead to another, which is basically my whole, actually my whole apartment, my whole house is set for that, basically where all logistics, it's taking care of logistics, you know, so it's really, I took like, you know, it took me like a three years, two and a half years to design my whole place here, but you know, there are so many little details with moving girls around, you know, what, what's there, what's down there, different energies on different floors. So it's um, it's a really interesting place to kind of, to observe. I think I'm gonna do a video soon about all little smart house details that I have. Some guys know because I have like a whole house I can control, I can manage for my iPhone. So basically I can turn on to the party mode, relax, chill out mode. I can change the energy of the house, the lighting and everything from, you know, from the smart system. So it's really cool, you know, design. It's really cool, like, you know, technological feature that you can basically install now. And actually it's, it's not that expensive at all. You know, you can, even in your, in your, in your places you can do, because you just put like a, those little modules, you know, under every like light and they're like, you know, kind of, you know, um, switch basically on off light, like, you know, kind of, you put little modules and, and, and these are connected to the Wi-Fi router and then basically they're all online and then you download the app and that's it, you know. So, but it's really good thing because when you're taking care of all those things, you know, music, food, wine, and everything, because everything is set, you come home, house is set to bring your girls, you know, there's no need for cleaning, there's no need for preparation, go buy something like, you know, the your logistics should be ready to bring girls 24-7. So let's let's hear some questions. Let's hear. I'm sure you guys have some questions. Let me try to read some of your questions. Bad boy, what is emotional projection? Can you give me some example? Okay, so what is emotional projection? So you can see girls are emotional creatures, okay? And they experience everything to emotions like I would say they're like a hundred thousand times more emotional than we are okay so you have to be able to show emotions it's part of emotional intelligence okay why if you wanna if you wanna push somebody to some emotion the easiest way to basically for a person to experience that emotion is for you to go inside that emotion so for example you go Let's say you wanna, you wanna, I don't kind of be in a good mood. You wanna jump, you know. This kind of, this is like a high emotional projection. So you're projecting really good, positive emotions. Like you know, you're having fun, you're partying, you're moving. You just kind of you pump your energy up, okay? Or you can go totally low, to sleepy mode. Or you go like a to sand mode, and you start crying. Or you go back to the party mode where you kind of you fully pump of energy. So this emotional specter you guys have to be you should have and that's kind of that's what i noticed when i coach lots of guys they lack in emotional intelligence they lack in a receiving and showing emotions so you want to be able to show emotions to experience emotions and you want to be able that she is experiencing emotion because as i said like in the last time when i was going live a few days ago Seduction is about pushing her to emotions. And there's an amazing article on my website as well. Guys, if you're not reading my articles, I mean, I spent every day, yesterday I posted an amazing article about how to pick up girls, you know, with dogs on the streets, like really easy way. So make sure every day you go to the badboylifestyle.com and check out there every day. Now it's gonna be a new article about in the game, texting, you know, sexual escalation, like about food, we are posting every day new articles, new videos, so make sure, basically my blog from today should be your center place in your life where you get knowledge, okay? I want you to bookmark badboylifestyle.com slash blog. This place, first thing when you wake up in the morning, you should check is there anything new there. In the evening, check is there anything new there. Every day we're gonna be now, I'm guessing, gathering my whole team all my instructors will be posting lots of stuff because they're fucking, we just ended summer camp and we realized how much knowledge as a group we have. And, you know, we're gonna start doing lots of stuff on the blog. So make sure you follow, there's some amazing articles on the blog. And yeah, I posted like a few days ago, what is seduction? 
So if you look at what is seduction, seduction is about two people. It's about controlling. It's about controlling her emotions, yours and hers. So it's forget forget the whole. What are you what are you saying? What opener it is? Okay, that's important, but not that important. Let's let's look on an emotional perspective. What you want to do when you approach a girl or girl in the office that you're in or girl in a in your social circle, what you want to do is you want to push her through some emotions. Okay, you want to push her through like through five or six emotional states. She has to experience five plus one more six emotional states with you. If she if you go to all of those six emotions, she will get horny and she will want to fuck you. So that is seduction in the essence. And so basically you have to control that emotional journey. She has to first first emotional basically when you come there, let's say in a club, is to make her relaxed. Okay. Then you're gonna talk. Second emotional thing, what she has to experience is attraction. So she likes you. There are ways how to do that, how to manipulate that, how to make sure that she feels attraction in her body. Then third emotional state is trust. She has to trust you. Then she has to feel that she knows you, connection. Then basically physical touch, that she is okay with you touching her. That is emotion as well. She's comfortable with your touch. So she's relaxed. She likes you. She trusts you. She's comfortable with you touching her. Emotion number five is make her horny. So then she's horny. And that's it. So basically you're pushing her to emotions. So seduction is you taking the person and it's, it's kind of emotional roller coaster making sure she's experiencing those emotions for that of course there's lots of things that has to happen on the verbal and body language on the confidence on lots of things on you know but in essence that is seduction that is seduction so let me answer another question i see some brazilian guys here so greetings to all my brazilian team and Roberto Augusto is asking when is going to be next boot camp in Brazil. So next boot camp is going to be in September. And Roberto, make sure you contact my guys or Bruno is going to contact you. And yeah, or Chris. And we're going to make sure that you're going to be on the boot camp in September. It's going to be probably in Sao Paulo. It's going to be really amazing boot camp. You know, basically now the, my guys are trained and I'll back in Brazil and we're going to rock the Brazil. So, any more questions, guys? Any more questions? Come on, let's hear some questions. Otherwise, I'm going to end up talking with myself again. So, okay. All total coaching is asking, what is the mindset you find the most important? So the mindset I find most important, who there's lots of things. I would say it's it's not mindset, it's the frame, it's basically you being the man. I'm the man, I know what I want, and I go for it. I don't apologize for my desires. If I like her, I like her. I'm going to go there and talk with her. If I don't like her, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to talk with her. So that's that, that, that's basically what I'm going to do is um, my basically, yes, inner game is really important. And basically very soon I'm releasing the whole inner game module of that. Kind of, but there's a difference between kind of attitude, beliefs, mindset, and then reality on top. So, yeah, it's basically it's, it's different. So, let's go next question. 
can I ask you if men can treat a, a if men can create attraction by giving money a girl? Of course, you can create attraction by giving a money. I mean, girls love that. Girls love when you give them money, but I don't think that's smart. I was just actually today writing an article I'm going to probably release tomorrow about 15 girls you should avoid at all costs. So one of them are the gold diggers and gold diggers are attracted to your money, not to you. They're, they're dating you just basically because you are buying them things. So. Yes, you can create attraction for the money, but you shouldn't. You should not buy attraction. You can go there and uh, grab, I don't know, you know, in a club, like a nice champagne or something. And yes, you're going to attract some gold diggers, some girls. But really, those girls, they will fuck you. They'll date you, but they're going to cost you lots of money. And they're not really the type of girls you want to date. Okay, like, you know, dating shouldn't cost much. Should cost like maybe like in you know, a cup of coffee or something, you know, some buy her like a cake, you know, go for cinema, something like you should spend minimum, not like you know, gold diggers, you're gonna spend like a thousand, two thousand US dollars, euros per month on dating them. I've been there, I've done that, and I don't recommend that at all. So I was testing whole thing, I find ways how to crack it, but on the end of a the day, they're gonna cost you lots of money, and you guys definitely should. At least at your level where you are right now, you should be saving money for other things. And you know, you shouldn't be like you know spending money and buying, you know, buying girls things, you know. They will always try some, but especially the hotter she is, or the more broke she is, the more she will try to get you into paying stuff. But you should basically you should have your mindset, your frame, your attitude basically set so she cannot play with that. So basically you know what's what's allowed, what's not allowed in a relationship. So next question is, what is the best beach approach? The best beach approach is when you get laid, of course. So <laughs> I would say the best beach approach is, see, I mean, if she's lying down on a beach, like, I mean, you have seen like probably on a day game module of a bed, but there's lots of beach approaches examples that we recorded last year, like in fields. Um, that's the best, you know, basically you just follow the bed by three step approach, knee down, squat down, you know, 45 degrees, lie down next to her, start talking with her and the most important thing on a beach approach is how do you sexually escalate, okay? And for that, you need a sun cream or some butter or some oil or anything else, okay? Why? Because, I mean, that's, that's what I usually do. So basically, you're talking with a girl on the beach, she's on her towel, okay? And it's hot sun, summer day. What you do is, basically, okay, so basically, you're talking, it's like you're three minutes in conversation. What you say is, uh, you know what, it's really hot. Do you have sun cream maybe? Sun oil, sun butter, whatever, anything, you know, any sun protection. She's like, yes. So you take it, you put it on yourself because it's hot, sunny day. And then you say, you know what, you know, turn around, you're burning as well, you know. So basically you turn her around, you apply it on the back. And so basically first you take the sun cream, apply it on yourself then apply it on her and then you slowly sexually escalate. You go put it on her legs a little bit and eventually you end up massaging her and eventually you you are playing, basically you are kind of going more and more. Of course, that has to follow up with, uh, with conversation and it just slowly goes progress. But that's, that's the best way to approach. Let's go, there's more questions. Uh, when I'm coming to Argentina, I actually I've been to Argentina two years ago and I think soon we're gonna start doing boot camps in Argentina uh, with my local trainers. So I think actually we're gonna we're gonna start we're gonna translate whole bad boy lifestyle to Spanish. So you guys are gonna be able to enjoy the local boot camps all over the Argentina and over the Spanish countries as well for for, for Portugal. So sorry, sorry for Brazil 
they're going to translate to Portuguese. So basically, the guys in Portugal, the guys in Brazil, they're going to be able to enjoy all the products, bad boy school, everything in the local language. So that's the news that's going to come soon. Uh, let's go more. Uh, drink. Should I pay for the drinks and food? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, in a first date, you have to pay. I mean, if you invite a girl on something, yes, first date, you have to pay. Then later on, you have to teach her to go 50-50. So um, maybe, I don't know, let's say you, you buy something, you buy coffee, she buys the cinema tickets or other way around or something. You're trying, it's like a, it's like a training. You're, you're, you're training her that this relationship should be kind of 50-50. And yes, there are ways how to kind of totally basically push her that she's paying for things. You know, there are ways, you know, but that's more advanced things. And I think you guys slowly and kind of have to kind of slowly first move from you paying 100% to getting kind of to try to get to 50-50. And then move on. So next question. Once you say make a few months a new hobby. So question: How to create an attractive lifestyle? Yes. So what you want to do? You want to be attractive man. Okay, and being an attractive man is a guy who does lots of things, different things. He's not only like a sitting in front of a computer all day long in the office, come, you know, come home and watch TV and does nothing. Okay, so you want to be an interesting guy. You want to be a guy who is playing guitar, who knows things about wine, you know, who does, who, I don't know, who, is, who read a couple of the books, you know, some books, you know who knows things about movies, he traveled the world, he then, I know he's good at salsa, he's good. So what you guys should do, eh? what you guys should do is every month or every two months, you should learn the new skill. Go out and sign up for salsa. Take one month of salsa. Then I don't like, you know, study guitar, play, learn how to play guitar. Then I know have hobbies, have hobbies. I mean, this living on this planet is so can be so much fun, and for that you don't need much money. You, you know, you don't don't go there. Ah, oh, I don't have money. To learn how to play guitar costs like a fifty, hundred bucks a month. To learn how to dance salsa, same fifty hundred something. There are classes you can like you know. Twice per week, they're actually they're free classes nonstop. So you can always create something basically new. So imagine, imagine what kind of guy, what kind of man can you become if let's say in two years from now, one year is nothing. Two years from now, you learn how to play guitar, you learn you know about the wines, you know, basically you go to some wine school one weekend, then next weekend you sign up for some massage seminar. So you spend three days massaging girls. You know, massaging warrior people, they're like, you know, kind of Friday, Saturday, Saturday. I've been to one of those, it's amazing, you know. You learn how to touch a woman perfectly, like, you know, it's perfect for you guys who need to learn how to touch women. If you have a problem with, with kino, with things, you should do that. Then, then I'd like, you know, you, let's say, like, a next month, you sign up for something else, you know, kind of, as I said, like, you know, some new language, something, you want to, you want to gather as many of those skills, life skills, as possible. Like I went two weeks learning how to cook. There's some like I'm like during the winter, some big like you know chefs from big hotels. They're running some kind of you know, kind of like a weekend boot camps, like summer camps, like a winter camps. And I went there to study about food, to learn about the food. It cost me like five hundred bucks. For one week, basically going to like you know to supermarkets, teaching you what to buy, what not to buy, what to eat, what not to eat, how to cook. And guess what? Now I can cook. It took me one week, and I can cook really good now. So 
that's what you're creating. You're creating a James Bond, a guy who is fucking amazing with things. And then you don't need to seduce girls. They are basically your personality, all of that is seducing because they're like, wow, who the fuck is this guy? Wow, that guy is fucking amazing. So that's what you're creating, basically. When you're creating an attractive lifestyle, that's what you're creating. So let's go more. Um, my mother is an anti woman. My childhood was total disaster, catastrophic. How can I seduce girls? So whoever can, um, whoever, po I don't see who posted this. Guys, if you have problems with a childhood, and actually, I noticed on, on summer camps, lots of guys had actually this kind of problems. You know, they all they, their problems with girls come from a childhood. They had they were abused, you know, some traumas, some you know, parents' issues. Basically, their problems with girls nowadays come from traumatic childhoods. If that is the case for you, please send me an email because I have some really amazing guys that I trained basically my inner game team that's part of my summer camp but now basically we're gonna start running some really hardcore events in the Germany and, and Switzerland for this kind of problems so basically if you have some hardcore deep traumas from a childhood something please contact me on Dan at badboylife.com I'm gonna send you I'm gonna forward you to my guys who will fix that? You know, they gonna basically you can do a Skype call, basically Skype coaching or one on one or whatever. But yes, they can they can help you as possible. We have on this summer can we have fixed some amazing things. We even have done like you know exorcism like last year we did again like this year. I mean imagine like we were doing exorcism on summer camp. I mean that's how deep this training is. We go really deep into the core of inner game, find all the problems, and we and basically once you open that can. There are lots of things you find there. So yes, uh, that can be fixed as well. Let's go more. Speaking of the Portugal. Uh, I've been to the Portugal and no, it's not true that pickup is disaster there. Uh, actually, there are a lot, you know, girls are okay. They're not the prettiest girls on the planet, but it's a little bit different. And I will say Portugal is more day game than club game. Because they they go to the clubs very late. Clubs open very late, like at two, three a.m. in the morning. And they get, they go to five, six, and that's kind of a bit too late for me. So um, yes, Portugal is really good. I like Portugal, and um, you have to fine tune the game for Portuguese girls. But that's nothing. That's nothing special, you know. But uh, yes, there's not many PUAs there. At least as I don't know, no, not really. So next question. How can I make a girl feel comfortable with physical escalation? So, how can you make a girl comfortable with physical escalation? By touching her. By being smooth, not like touching her like this, you know, kind of, you know, kind of, <laughs> what I have seen is in the last summer camp, the guy was like a touching a girl, you know, like, like this. Like, doop, doop. No. Um, your touch should be warm should be steady should be kind of like really like you know comfortable maybe at, at first basically first touch you can hide like with oh you have something there like you know just for she, she gets used to it and then you can do more and more but basically there are three zones on the body red zone green zone Basically, sorry, uh, green zones, yellow zones, and the red zones. There are three zones on her body. I mean, guys, you should really sign up for a bad boy school. All of that information is there, like everything. There, there are clips with me talking, explaining on a woman for hours, for like, about like 45 minutes about that, how to touch a woman. So you, sec you sexual selection guy, go to the club module of the bad boy school. You have everything there about that. Next question. Oh, uh, geez, lots of questions, lots of questions. What's the fastest pickup line to gain attraction and get a number as quickly as possible? So, Mr. Ruben Lima, what is the fastest pickup line? 
the best and the fastest pickup line is actually direct game. Being direct, being honest. I like you. Who are you? What's your name? Or I don't know why, but I really like you. Or for the club, you know what? You are so fucking sexy. Who are you? What's your name? That line is going to give you attraction. Why? Because you are choosing her. You are being the man. She is the woman. I like you. I like, I like, but that's what you, that, that's the words. What's behind what you actually not saying is, I like the way you look and I'm choosing you. From all the girls here, I am choosing you. I like. Who are you? What's your name? Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's going to give you lots of attraction. And now forgetting the number as soon as possible, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be doing that. So why? Because if you get, it's possible to get a number under like a two minutes, but every number under five minutes is going to be a flake. She doesn't know you. So yes, I can go out there to the street. I can actually, I can take the camera and show you like, you know, okay, now it's a little bit too late, you know, but anytime, you know, and show you that basically you can get a number like bam, 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 bam. She gives you the number within 30 seconds, one minute. And you have the number. She goes away, she doesn't know you, she forgets you in half an hour. And then you send a text message, you call nothing, flick. So my rule is 15 minutes, 10 to 15, not as long as possible, but at least 10 minutes. So this girl, once I leave, she has impression about me. She knows who I am, what I do. You know, she knows my hobbies. She has some image about who the fuck I am. And she as well, and I have image about her. So therefore, I'm giving her opportunity to get to know me. She's giving her opportunity to get to, to get to know her. So when I leave and when I text, send a text message, she, ah, that's the guy from the street. Ah, I, I like him. I remember him. So that's why basically you cannot, you cannot just go very fast, like with a number. Thanks, some, you know, you know, spend some time and get to know her. Don't go very fast. Okay, let's move on. More questions, more questions. Let me let me pick one. Online dating. I fucking hate online dating. So, Mr. Nike, Nike, Mikey. Uh, online dating. Too much time, too much effort. You spend hours of texting. It's so much easier to get on a street, get a girl number, or go to the club, bring her home, and fuck her at home, than spend like you know days, weeks to get her on a date. Yes, it's possible. For me, it's too much time consuming. I'm more efficient with my time. I don't, you know, I I hate being at home, kind of fucking texting with her all day long, like you know, and because. Look, you approach a girl on online, she doesn't know anything about you. Now you have to build trust, you have to build attraction, you have to kind of build connection and then get her over there. I can do that in a real life in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I can build trust, attraction and connection and get her horny, 20 minutes. Therefore, I, she's ready for me to take her home and fuck. Within half an hour, 45 minutes, I can be back to my place having sex. With online, I'm still fucking texting with her. So it just, for me, it doesn't make sense. So let's go more. Let's go more. Um, any experience with a game on Cuba Islands? So I cannot say anything about the Cuba because I didn't been there, but my, my really good friend Bruno been there and he told me amazing stories. So I definitely want to go to Cuba. Cuba have some fun there because I heard the girls are awesome and there's some problem with paying, with they, they ask you money, but that's kind of normal thing. But yeah, no, not much. Really not much. I can't tell much about Cuba. No experience at all. So let's go more, more questions, more questions. So how do you, Mr. Grimodo, Grimodo, how do you stop feeling that girls are better than you 
and you are not enough. So this is inner game question, okay? So what happens? If you didn't have good conversation with yourself, you didn't work on your inner game. Who are you? Who the fuck are you? What do you give to the girls? What do girls want in your life? Basically, what are, what's the purpose of the girls in your, in the life? then you're going to have this problem as you're feeling no value. You're like you have nothing to give. So that's why it's, you know, inner game is really important because inner game, you're defining who are you? Who the fuck are you? And what the fuck do you represent to this world around yourself? And what are the girls in your life? What do they mean? So that's really important thing that you have to do with yourself. Take a list, pen and paper, and work on that. Write down what are your top qualities. What do you give to the, what's unique about you, your unique USP, unique selling point that you give to the girls? Why, the girl, why you should have girls in your life? For example, I am very aware of that because I have done my inner game many times. I know that any girl who comes to my life, she's gonna be fucking amazing. She's gonna be, she's gonna have the most amazing time ever. Why? She's gonna travel the world with me. I'm gonna teach her so many things. I'm gonna improve her life. She's gonna get probably better job. This with connections I have, you know, she's gonna have amazing sex. She, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a woman out from her. I'm gonna teach her everything about the life. You know, she she, she can experience things with me. She can, you can enjoy my place, you know, she's going to be, you know, I don't know, in sauna with me here in Jacuzzi, having fun, you know, kind of meeting awesome people. So I know what I, what I put on the table. I'm where, and each one of you guys, there is, there is something there, you know, there is, each one of you are giving something unique, but you have to be congruent with that. You have to fucking find out what is that. What is that that you give? Otherwise, you're just going there and selling something, but you know what you're selling. Who are you? Who are you? What do you represent? And what are you? Why they should be with you? What's unique about you? And I'm sure if you ask yourself deep enough, you're going to find some amazing questions, some amazing things. And that's my basic whole, my whole inner game module which is coming soon of the bad, on a bad boy school, is going to be exactly about that. I'm going to give you lots of exercises, lots of things, how to go deep inside, how to build your persona. So basically, when you go out, you don't feel, you don't value enough, but you feel like I'm the man and you should be lucky to be with me. Because that's what I built, that's what, exactly what I have built it for myself. When I go out, I'm very aware of my values of who I am and what do I give to them. And they can feel that. That's why I don't need much of the gaming nowadays because my inner game is so strong. My inner game, my whole life that I created, Bill, is saying so much about me. So yes, guys, make sure that you prepare yourself. Inner game module is coming soon. Before the inner game module, go to the basics of seduction. You cannot just start with inner game module. Prepare yourself. Basics of seduction in a club game are the must modules for you guys to prepare yourself for the inner game. Let's go more. I still have problems with approach anxiety. Oh, approach anxiety. Often I fail to approach girls when I go out. So Thomas, 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 you feel introverted. Any tips? So, what I noticed, every approach of anxiety comes from different source. You know, so like there is approach anxiety and then there are things lying inside your inner game. They're fucking things up. So I cannot give you now the exact mission because I don't have enough information to basically to point out from which part is coming. And there are a couple of possible options basically where approach, approach anxiety is coming. But what you have to do, because you know you basically you're training yourself, is what you have to do is push yourself more 
you have to push yourself like you know to to try you have to push yourself okay my guys are telling that camera disappeared let me check let me check let me check No, I'm still online. So yes, uh, try to push yourself with as much motivation as possible. Go out there, give yourself some easy tasks, like just saying hi to girls. Like, hi, how are you? And just kind of, hi, hi. Just try to, just try to be extrovert. Try to kind of talk with people. Just kind of push, push, push. I mean, I had a really bad example of Project Anxiety this year in a summer camp. The guy who couldn't talk with girls at all, he couldn't have hold eye contact with the girls. And we managed to fix it like in two, within two, three days, he was out from Project Anxiety. So yes, it's possible with the right techniques, right teachers, basically when, when we find out what's deep inside, it's much easier. And that's basically why we do trainings, you know, because we found so many different things to help you guys. You know, when you're coaching yourself, it's harder because I mean, I coached 10,000 guys, you coached only yourself. So I, of course, I found like millions of patterns, millions of things that are common with the guys. So it's for, I mean, it's really important that, that you guys, even if you're at home, you come to our live trainings, live seminars. We have lots of, we're going to have lots of events all over the planet now. They're going to be some free, some are paid, depends you know, on which stage are you. But you should, guys should definitely participate events, start doing things, you know, kind of just kind of not just sit at home and read articles. That's important as well, like online, but as well, go to the live trainings. Not just me, with anybody, wherever you feel comfortable, you go there, they're going to push you, they're going to do some things to change your mind find yourself a good coach good company who's going to coach you if it's not bad boy lifestyle find whoever it is i don't give a shit. work on yourself so let's go more questions so grimodo how do you stop being needy with girls so the easiest way to stop being needy with girls is to start fucking couple of the girls. So when you're fucking two, three girls, you're not going to be needy because you don't need them. They need you. So this is the best way. Having options. You should have options. Everybody should have options. Okay. That's why girls, they are they feel like you know so in control because she has like you know full phone of the guys you know texting them like a non-stop like what i have now on my phone like you know see like i'm offline for like you know 45 minutes and guess what look, look at my phone that's how the girl's phone looks like in a day like two three hundred text messages phone calls this and that so that's you know they have options they have you guys should have options though you cannot focus on the one girl you you never focus on the one girl even you have this one amazing most beautiful girl you still date you still go out you still try to fuck other girls why because here to not be needy to not fall in love to not fuck up that relationship with her and that's amazing every adventure outside of the relationship is gonna make your relationship better it's hard to crack this, but it's true. You, you, you have kind of this amazing relationship with this beautiful nine or a 10. Go out, get yourself two other girls, and your relationship with this girl is going to be better with these two girls in your life. Why? You have options. You're feeling like a man. You have more testosterone. She cannot control you. When she controls you, like, you like a shut the fucking up on whatever, like you know. So um, you are you are the man. You know you're gonna feel like more dominant, more power. So let's go more questions, more questions. I hear some guys are telling me that camera is going on and off. I have no fucking idea because it looks all fine on my end. 
let me answer Dennis, Dennis, Middle Eastern and Arabic girls. So for Arabic girls, I really cannot say much because I haven't, I'm not much into them, but for Eastern European girls, I can tell you more. And um, they are very, so the more Easter you go, the more they're going to be loyal to their men, the more dominant men they need, okay? So it's like if you go, if you go, let's say, I don't know, to like London, Canada, New York, whatever, like, you know, girl be like, you know, ah, I don't need a man, I don't give a shit, like, I can't live without men. The more you go Eastern, like, you know, to like, you know, less civilized countries, the more of, dependency on a man and the man who protects her who gives her whole life is needed so you have to be very careful and you have to kind of minimize your being kind of you know kind of dominant you know sexual and be more respectful more nice guy but still taking care of things you have to take care of her in every segment possible and i'm going to give you one tip for eastern european girls so for all of you guys who are coming to Eastern Europe, you know, kind of Croatia, Serbia, Russia, Ukraine, Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Bosnia. There is one thing with um, that you guys very often fail. And I, I noticed that actually in some countries as well, but this is very, very, very common for Eastern European girls. It's about kissing. Eastern European girls, they will fuck you but they will not kiss you. And that's why I noticed with lots of PUAs who come, basic players who come over here to basic to Eastern Europe, like, you know, they they go, they approach, and the girl is like, no, 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 and they, they, they think, okay, now, basically, it's game over, it's not. There is Eastern European girls, they, they kind of protect, but they are saving kisses for the boyfriends, for the guys who they like, but they will still fuck you. So basically, like, you know, if you do a proper game, you know, kind of you do like, you know, proper TCC sexual loop, kind of you do proper game, you can still fuck her, just don't, you don't have to kiss her to fuck her. Like with other girls, you got, you go basically yellow zone, you go, you make out, kissing is part of sexual escalation. In, uh, in some countries here, basically on, on Eastern Bloc, you can skip that and just basically go to, to the sex without kissing her. So they will allow you to kiss her, but they're not gonna allow you to fuck her, okay? So that's kinda, that's one thing that, um, that's kinda different and can you to kinda, every country, basically seduction is about, seduction is about improvisation. Not improvisation, like it's calibration. It's calibration within improvisation. Every, you have to call it cultural calibration. Every culture is a little bit different. Okay, let's go more questions. I just found out there's a lot of questions here. How can you use hypnosis in seduction? NLP is really bad to use in seduction. NLP hypnosis are amazing tools for fixing people, for fixing inner game, for fixing traumas, for entering unconscious things, but not really for seduction. You know, you don't want to use NLP and, you know, and basically a hypnosis on the girls. It's creepy, it's stupid, you know. So, no. Uh, no, you don't have to, you don't need to. So, let's go more. Um, uh, let's see more questions. Bad boy, bad boy. Girls are on the phone. How to deal with girls who are on the phone? So if you notice, if you notice, like you know, that she is on the phone, like I don't like, let's say she's walking or I don't know, doing something, like or sitting, like you know, you just go there with a pattern and like, hey, let me have something, like you know, strong. Hey, she's like, hang up. Tell him you go. She's like, what? What? Tell him you're gonna call him later. And then hang up, tell him you're gonna call him later. She's like, okay, too. Now, and that's it. But then she hangs up 
and then now you can talk with her. For the girls who are texting on the phone all the time, that is, you just take the phone, put the hand above the phone, look in your eyes, take the phone away, baby. Now when you're with me, you don't need a phone. Take the phone, flip it around and put it on the table so it's visible. But set the rules. When you are with me, you're not going to text. I had one girl, she showed up on a date with me and she was like first 10 minutes of a date texting, texting, you know, basically she's talking with me, but you know, kind of texting. I'm like, you know what? I took the phone, put it on my side of the table. When you are with me, you're only with me, baby. I took my phone, switched off in front of her, look, you have all my time now, and put my phone on the top of her phone. Strong being dominant, okay? Not aggressive, not crazy, smooth smile, James Bondish energy, all James Bondish, like Roger Moore, smile, being, being very calm, relaxing, that's, that's the mindset you want to have, okay? So let's go more questions. Is it really important to be charming? No, no, charming. It's not that near. Charming is more like a nice guy. It's like, you know, what you want to be, you want to be dominant guy who knows what he wants who is okay inside his inner game who is smooth and sexual okay so confidence being smooth being a leader being sexual being interesting but not charming charm um, charm is very complicated and you don't need it, you know, so um, no. Like it's very more important to being a good leader, being a good leadership, you know, basically in a leading girls from one place to another, like let's say you are with a girl, say, you know, let's go there. You take her there, like, you know, you know I'm thirsty, you know, let's go there, you know. So being a good leader, it's important because girls, especially in a club or they can be like, oh, I want to go there. No, I want to go there. No, let's go there. No, it's my song. Let's go dance. So they're all over the place. That's why they need someone who is going to be strong, who is going to be confident, who is going to calm them down and, you know, lead them. Because that's how they're in life as well. And that's why girls, they don't live that successful life because they're all over the place, nonstop. They cannot focus, you know, girls have problem with ADD. You know, girls have much more problems, inner game problems, personality problems than you guys can ever imagine, that you guys have. You know, it's not visible because they're hiding it, but they have so many, they're dealing with more shit than you guys all combined together. They have more traumas, you know, guys trying to rape them, fuck them, you know, stealing money, this, you know, they, they cannot approach, they have to go out and wait, they have to spend thousands fucking of dollars on their makeups, on things, to be beautiful, if she's a little bit fat, nobody wants to date her, nobody wants to fuck her, you know, her parents are pushing to go find some guy, society is saying you have to get married, you know, then she's horny, but society is saying, no, you cannot, you cannot fuck, you're going to be a slut. If you give a phone number too easily, you're a slut, you're this. They have so many restrictions in their heads, in their minds, fucking their inner game is fucked. You know, you guys cannot, I cannot describe you how much problems the average girl has when she goes out to meet you or me. And that's why you cannot be confused and uh, as well because it's fucking too confusing two people with problems trying to meet each other it doesn't work that's why one of these two has to be clear calm dominant 
and has a plan where are we going because two fucked up people will never manage to, to, to create something too insecure people too confused so that's why that's why kind of I'm trying to teach you guys how to be a man how to lead how to be dominant how to take care of them how to how to have fun you know kind of how to enjoy them and all those little things that you have to do to help them she's going through lots of mental shit to go out and expose herself for you to pick her up she's doing lots of pre-work at home you know i used to live with girls basically i know and i'm dating non-stop so i know how much time how much effort it takes for a girl to go to a club it's two hours work it's hour and a half two hours work you and me i put a fucking shirt on jeans i take my wallet take my phone and i'm out it's like seven minutes total my investment is seven minutes to go to a club and to collect some phone numbers keys closes some fuck clothes for her it's whole night whole afternoon she's preparing thinking what she's gonna dress her hair you know going i mean i don't have a hair okay but long hair you wash and dry it's one hour just washing so basically so she so it smells nice so it's kind of you know it's soft and then makeup is half an hour 45 minutes dressing shoes what she's gonna wear it's 45 minutes shaving legs you know bikini hair. it's it's a process it's a process they go through like whenever they're going out you know so she's investing lots of time and then she goes there and nobody's approaching her you guys have fucking approach anxiety imagine that imagine imagine how they feel that's something that you guys don't see okay because you know you it's again like in you know, a problem with um, emotional intelligence look at from their perspective she does all of that she takes two hours to go out and then she's standing in a bar and there is there is a guy in front who wants to approach but he does you know he's like no no i'm not gonna go there you have approach anxiety i understand you but she thinks oh he doesn't like me Ah, oh, maybe I'm fat. Maybe my dress is bad. Maybe this and that. And then another guy is again shaking, you know, kind of, or you know, kind of. No, I want to go there. No. Uh, she's thinking. She's blaming herself. Everybody sees himself in a club. Their own problems. So she's thinking something is wrong with her. You are thinking something is wrong with you. And I'm thinking, fuck this planet needs me needs fucking help both sides because girls have fucking problems on one end you guys have problems on another end and so i have to kind of push you together kind of help both of your sides to kind of meet because i was coaching girls as well so i know i coached you guys for 15 years i know everything about you guys i know I know every day, every day I'm fucking writing articles, recording videos every day for the last 10 years, 12 years. I've been going out there, coaching, inventing new stuff. So I know everything. There, there's no one element of the game that I haven't spent hours, days playing on that. Let's go more questions. So Jurč says, I'm Jurč says getting numbers. He has problem getting numbers, but bringing them to his place. So Mr. Jurč, okay. So if you have problems getting phone now, actually bring girls to your place, it means something is wrong with your texting or setting up dates or something. Okay. So what you have to do is when you get a phone number then and there in that moment you are setting up a date 
you're saying, you know what, I want to see you again. I'm taking you next weekend to this place or you go down to my place, whatever. Tell her then and there, so because she agrees when you exchange your numbers. And you never text, I mean, it, it doesn't work. Texting, texting, and then come over to my place. Very few girls will have confidence to sit in a car or get a taxi, Uber, and get over to your place and fuck. Okay? It does not work like that. So the way it works, you have to you have to structure the dates so they end up at your place. So you start, let's say, in some cafe, then you go somewhere with something physical like I know, salsa, I use I know go kart, something fun. I like part of my day to be fun because I'm a very adventurous person. I like to so I'm gonna do stuff, I'm gonna do crazy stuff with the girls. And then we go get some drinks, and then we're gonna end up at my place here. So I they go through a journey. It's never it's never a hey, come over to my place, you know, we're gonna yes, that happens as well. But I would say in 80% of cases, it's I take them through the places and then we somehow end up at my place. But I'm gonna give you one really good tip how you can bring girls back to your place very easily. And it's cooking. I'm not sure you cook, probably do. I don't give a shit. Learn how to cook. Okay. Go to my go to my bad boy school dating and relationship module. And you're gonna see me cooking for the girls. Actually, I, I wrote a recipe, bad boy recipe, pasta with salmon that's gonna get you laid hundred percent. The whole structure. So basically you you invite a girl. Come over to my place, I'm gonna cook for you. And then you cook her my recipe, and you will get laid. I guarantee you that. So go to the bad boy school, dating and seduction module, grab yourself a recipe for the date, invite a girl and cook her that. Basically, there's a whole video of me cooking exactly step by step what you have to cook, ingredients. It's like a cooking show I did in front of a girl and then you are engaging the girl there to cook with you so basically you, you, you're triggering something else you're building more trust and rapport in the kitchen open the wine talk and that's the easiest way to get a girls back to your place from the from texting but you have to cook and you have to learn how to cook so you can you can learn yourself or grab a module i'm gonna teach you there how to cook whatever it, whatever it you choose so let's go one more question and then you're gonna finish because i'm already tired i'm talking you know how tiring it is to talk with yourself for one hour i'm talking with a computer for one hour uh let me choose some good question So, so Mac Mac, let me answer this question. What to do when a girl says you are overbearing, like you are trying to convince her to do something? Like there is a fine tune, unfortunately, between being interesting and too interesting. So, I hope I understand the question. You never try to convince girls into something because convincing is logical. You see this glass? Okay, let me use something. I, I like to use things. Okay, let's let's use this. So what happens? This is the logic. This is A, we should go there. You never do that. Okay. Instead of what you do is you create emotions. You create emotional state where she has to go there. And then you don't have to convince things. 
See, girls, they don't work like guys. You know, you can convince me, I can convince you. But girls, they work in a different way. Girls, they're going to do something if they feel. If they feel it's right, they're going to do it. If they don't feel it's right, it's logic against their feelings. It doesn't work. So what you have to do is you have to push you into the emotional state. So, for example, you cannot convince a girl to kiss you. But you can push you in an emotional state where she wants to be kissed. You cannot push a girl to fuck you or convince her to fuck you. Yeah, you should fuck me because I'm better than the other guy that you fucked or I'm whatever. Like, you know, I fuck better than... No. What you do, you make her horny. You... You push her to the state, you move her to the state where her panties are wet, where she wants to be fucked, and then you proceed with sex. So, guys, stop. See, that's the problem with lots of you guys. You're still playing the game on the mental level. You're trying to seduce the brain instead of trying to seduce the body. What you guys should do, you should seduce their bodies. Start taking care of the bodies. Start taking care of their feelings, of their emotions, of how the fuck they feel when they are there with you in the moment, when she's there with you. Is she feeling good? Is she feeling happy? Is she feeling nervous, fucked up, confused? How is she feeling when she's with you? That's important. Convincing is the logical game. You don't convince girls into anything. Like what I did yesterday. Like we, we started like when, when the sister came, basically when my date with her sister came there. So we were in a living room down there here below. And what I did, I took my app, my smart, my, my smart, and, and I turned on the blue lights on the terrace outside. Okay. And I put, I placed the music. So they placed, so they are on, on a playing on a terrace as well. So we are in a kitchen, in a living room down there. And guess what happens? She feels the urge somehow to go to the terrace. I didn't convince her. I didn't say, hey, let's go out. Let's go out. We should go to the terrace. Out. Let's sit outside. No. I created the moment where it makes sense that we are going out there to the terrace, where it's better than staying here. So that's how you con that's how you do things like for example what i do a lot is during the winter i play with temperature of my house like here i'm gonna play with one degree up and down of my heating and one degree is difference be between cold and warm and i found actually exactly which degree and what and i think i'm gonna record some video about that very soon so we are watching a movie on on my sofa and it gets cold basically but i mean okay it, it doesn't get cold anyhow it gets cold because i press the right button to get cold so i press like you know minus one degree so it's just freezing and she's like ah oh, it's cold here so i go there and let a, grab a blanket and i bought this amazing blanket like i spent like probably like 70 bucks on a blanket like in a really nice feeling fluffy blanket I go there and she goes under the blanket next to me. So it's not a big blanket. So basically we need to kind of get together to be under the blanket. So now I'm there holding her. Again, I didn't convince her to get under the blanket very close to me. I created a feeling. She was cold. The blanket is too, it's not that big. So we can basically, you know, we can be like, you know, two meters apart. So basically it's one meter, basically it's meter, you know, it's like a meter 0.5, meter 0.5, so that like that. Kind of. So we need to kind of get together to be under the blanket. So it's all little things that's planned. Lots of planning happens there, guys. Lots of planning to the things. But again, it's not convincing. Game is played on that level, on that deeper. And that's why guys, all you guys are very smart. I want you to start using your brains. Start using your brains, your intelligence. 
to sort things out but not on a brain level on emotional level and guys more or less that's it i'm getting fucking tired because i'm talking with myself and for one hour now and one hour actually 15 minutes so it's really hard if you have you know if you don't know how it feels go in front of the mirror and try to talk with yourself for 15 minutes like this you know ask yourself questions and just kind of talk and you will see it's amazing exercise to go out there and to talk with girls as well if you can talk with yourself for one hour and a half and entertain yourself and tell jokes and be in a good positive energy you can do it with the girls as well so um, you know i'm just demonstrating here what actually you can do with girls as well because with girls sometimes like this you know there's no feedback they don't say anything you guys are not saying anything i'm here i'm reading your question something comes if nothing comes you know i'm still talking you know same thing happens with the girls you have to be able to talk with yourself to tell stories to be interesting to yourself not to them they're just fucking sitting there and listening to you they're black holes so guys enjoy your days enjoy your night it was pleasure one more monday is there this clip is going to be on youtube after this i think the youtube is going to actually put it automatically there so you can watch it if some guys miss it you can send it to your friends and all of you guys i want you on my blog send more friends read those articles we are putting lots of time and energy producing amazing content for you going out there live approaches we are doing lots of stuff for you guys i want you to go there participate share those things on a facebook share it to your friends there's some amazing articles i want you to read all those articles because just following that is going to get you a better in a game just reading my article and plus you're going to go out you're going to do stuff so just go out and guys start doing things start having fun start enjoying your life and that's it guys all for me see you soon bad boy is out bad boy is off to the bedroom to get some sleep now bye